The question related to the service package. So what is the use of connection pooling? What is the use of access groups in service package or what comprises of service package? Okay, so when, is it, when we say comprises, what, what does the service package do? Okay, and what is the significance of service package? Can we change access group of service package or authentication in the service package rule? Can we do that in the production straight away? Okay, so these kind of questions that they can ask. Now, basically service package is a container to store all your services. So any service that we create, it should be associated to a service package. So basic use of the service package is, it is a gate, okay? So whenever there is any services that we are exposing from our application, so this, let's assume this is my service, okay? So before we are exposing my service to the customers, let's assume this is a customer who would like to access one of my service. So basically any information that we provide to the customers or another application and another application in general it's not like straightforward we access it it's a gate gateway that we need to pass so any request that comes in the request has to pass through a service package so any request that comes it has to pass the service package so service package what it checks is it checks whether you are privileged to access the service or not. So whether you have a complete authentication parameters or not. So you have different type of authentication mechanisms available in Pega. Sometimes we, there is some kind of a customizations of authentication also required some for the more secured uh, services that are available that may require some kind of a deep encryption set standards and all. Okay, so such kind of any service, any service, and in general, whenever we are exposing any inf any information from our application to the outsiders, so we need to have a strong foundation. So for that reason, we generally have the authentication developed. And in addition, there is a Pega level security, which is done by the access group. So definitely you provide an access group and the authentication defined on the service package. So any service that is going to expose, so we generally have a service package. So service package will give the information about what all services that it holds and what is the permission level that it is going to capture. In addition, we do have a connection pooling settings. So what is a connection pooling is, so connection pool is nothing but a pool of requesters available. So in general, pool of requesters in a sense, this is kind of, uh, let's say we are going to a tourism, okay? And there is a kind of guides who are available to guide us for the tourism, all right? So it is like there is a person who is going to come and till he finishes the request. So this is responsible. So basically it's a kind of a bus that is provided and this bus is responsible to do the complete request okay so there's each and every request comes in so they they take one connection pool okay so it is a kind of that there are multiple requesters available in it kind of there are multiple buses available and each and every bus is responsible to take the guest and take to the service and once the service finishes the response so it is going to give us back the response to the user. So each and every connection pool, in this connection pool, we have set of requesters and each requester is responsible to fulfill each request, okay? Any request that comes in, it fulfills the request and sends back the response. So this way, each and every request, each and every requesters which are, uh, which are, uh, which are there in this connection pool are responsible to to complete each and every request, all right? So if in case there are, let's say uh, 10 requesters already available and there are 20 requests coming in, so what happens? So it will keep in a waiting time. So there will be some waiting time given for the users who are beyond the requester. So it's like given some time frame so that the request that it is completing and then once it finishes, it will come back that requester and sets it. Like 
the bus. Okay, so once the bus journey is traveled and come back and the request is fulfilled, then the bus will come to the bus stop and or else there is a pool where the buses will be kept. Okay, so here I am saying bus. So here it's a connection requester. Okay, so once that is completed, then it is free. So it is going to take the another request. So that way it will work. So let's do it. Uh, let's go to the service package rule. And here in the service package rule, you do have the options. So let's go to integration resources and service package. So I can have one service package created for one application and all my services can be associated to this package. So it's a container, okay? So HR app services, let's assume. So you can just create a rule. So here, the service package comes under a data instance. So that is the reason it is not associated to any version. It is associated only to a rule set, not to a version. And you see there's a stateless and stateful um, sessions. Okay, so stateless is whatever the request comes in, it doesn't maintain any information about the previous request and the next request. And in general, most of the services are stateless. If in case stateful is, it keeps some information with the request that is passed. Okay, so in this scenario with the stateful, then definitely there is kind of multiple requesters should be there because let's say the, the what is the difference between stateful and stateless is stateless is anyone who comes in okay so if the previous request and the next request there is nothing dependent on it but if it is stateful it maintains some kind of information here okay so it has to maintain some kind of a cookie information so that the previous set of user uh, whenever they comes again so it's kind of remembering the thing so like i already know about this particular customer okay so that way the cookies will help all right so most of the services are stateless no need to go in deep okay and there is a service access group as i mentioned there's additional so what is the significance of this access group is so to maintain the application context privileges given in the access access group so in the access group we do have access roles and access roles are responsible to what kind of uh, privileges to be provided for each and every class so that is something we specify under the access role we'll, um, Okay, and there is a requires authentication. So if there are different set of authentication or basic or customized authentication also you can define so that that authentication is responsible to fulfill the access uh, or whenever to provide the service methods that are created inside. So whenever you tag a service package automatically the service methods will show here. So if you create a service uh, rule, then you will see the and whenever you associate this particular package then you automatically the methods will come over here so we just refresh and see this methods will come over here and automatically whenever there is a there is a service that comes in in the open api tab you will see there is a yaml swagger so these are some of the editors provided to see how the service uh, services that are there in this service package to see all the services that are supported by this service package. So in this particular service package, what are services that are available? Those all the services will be kept in the format of a YAML and Swagger editor. So this helps us to give for the third party as well to see how the services are built and how the input, how the input and outputs are designed for it. OK, so this helps in that way. No need to go in detail about uh, how this open API works. But this automatically taken care of by itself. Now, as I said, pooling the maximum number of requesters who are active, who are idle, and we can say how much waiting time given for the requesters if already some of the requesters are busy. Okay, so if the users, the requesters are already busy, what is the maximum amount of time that is can be given? Okay, so sometimes, sometimes you can increase the wait in seconds. So let's say thirty seconds or sixty seconds. Okay, and how many active requesters? So use active requesters. If you increase the services, will be done immediately. Okay, as in when the request comes, so immediately the requester will fulfill it. But it depends on the server server configuration as well. So our server should be enough. Okay, to fulfill the request. If the maximum number of requesters you are keep on increasing, definitely the performance also impacts. All right. So it depends on server configuration. So 
these kind of decisions in general will be taken by the LSAs. All right. So that's it uh, for the service package. And one last question, which I forgot is, uh, can we change the access group of service package and production? Yes, we can change the access group because service package is a data rule, data instance. And in general, whenever you create a service package, we need to explicitly take the PZINS key of this rule. Okay. And then we need to take that and keep that in the product rule. Okay. So in general, this can be updated in the production. Why? Because this is a data instance. It doesn't associate to any version. We can update anytime, irrespective of it is a production also. All right. 